Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode in our series devoted to digital identity on Blockchain Central. Today, we'll focus on digital identity in supply chains. Every month we publish three videos, two in-depth explorations into the fascinating world of blockchains, and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you want to stay up to date with our content, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the little bell to always get notified when we drop a new video. Also, be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description box for details. Now, let's talk about supply chain. If you follow our channel, as you should, you'll know that we've reported on multiple companies already deployed DLT to manage their supply chains. These companies include big players such as Walmart, Carefor, or Nestle. But what exactly is the appeal of blockchain in this context? What problems is it trying to solve? And how does digital identity come into play in all of this? Let's break it down. Managing a supply chain, especially for a big international operation, is not an easy task. Bernard Marr, writing for Forbes, really put it best by saying, depending on the product, the supply chain can span over hundreds of stages, multiple geographical locations, a multitude of invoices and payments have several individuals and entities involved and extend over months of time. When talking about digital identity, blockchains and supply chains, there are two fundamental case studies that we should analyze. Number one, a supply chain focused on fast moving consumer goods, FMCG, where the challenge is tracing the place and time of origin, delivery, and the time of sale. Two, a manufacturing supply chain where it is important to synchronize the production and deliveries of components built in different factories across the globe. The second case is arguably more complex, but we've already heard reports of Apple exploring blockchain to track the origin of their source materials. The goal of the project would be ensuring that they are sourcing ethically, an aspect of manufacturing that the company has struggled with in its past. In both scenarios, a blockchain solution can significantly mitigate and automate several key processes, such as A, relying on paper documentation, which is still prevalent in the shipping industry today. B, minimizing the necessity for manual data input, which is slow and could generate discrepancies. C, traceability, and more importantly, giving the end user ability to track the origin of the product. And D, delivering a tamper-proof solution and removing the need for trust in the process. Before we look into how blockchain can contribute to supply chains, we should answer a fundamental question. Why is a decentralized IT solution better than a centralized one? Most companies currently use a centralized IT system to manage their supply chains and, as demonstrated by the fact that we can actually buy things, it seems to be working rather well. A centralized supply chain regimen makes it easy to keep track of data, monitors progress, and ensures security and quality while keeping the cost down. At the same time, a centralized solution is, by definition, geographically limited, which brings a requirement to move goods or components to a specific central hub for processing. This can increase shipping costs as well as the carbon footprint. It can also make it more difficult to source employees. When using a blockchain to manage your supply chain, the most positive impact can be seen in making the system trustless. If every node of your supply chain effectively becomes a node operator, it means that a single node can't change or tamper with its records without affecting other nodes. If every single node stores information about all the other nodes and there is a consensus mechanism in place, it might be easier to onboard new participants and later hold them accountable when something goes wrong. In short, the three fundamental benefits of DLT in supply chains are decentralization, immutability, and transparency. Of course, there are trade-offs because in highly complex supply chains, it might be impractical to store big amounts of data on every single node. Also, processing times can become very long when all the nodes need to agree on the changes. These are all typical blockchain scalability issues, which we covered in detail in our episode on this subject. You can check it out here. The general takeaway is that all these issues can be resolved by modifying how the ledger operates. This brings us to the digital identity and how it interacts with the distributed ledgers. When talking about supply chains, there are two fundamental aspects to consider. 
the identification of the supplier, including their credentials, certificates, etc., and the identification of the asset, such as a product or a component. Supplier certification can be done through a third-party entity or through a Know Your Customer KYC verification process handled by the company in charge of the supply chain. In both cases, the verification process is somewhat centralized. So, what are the alternatives? A decentralized solution was already proposed and implemented in British Columbia and Ontario and is known as Verifiable Organizations Network, or VON. It takes advantage of the Sovereign Network, one of the leading providers of distributed digital identity solutions. The concept is simple. The local government issues a digital identity to a business, which can later be used to conduct global operations. What's more interesting, the VON code is 100% open source and available on GitHub. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to learn more about Sovereign and Vaughn. Identifying assets is already a well-established practice, both in retail, wholesale, and supply chains in general. A variety of techniques can be used here, including barcodes, RFIDs, NFCs, or QR codes. Once identified, such product can live on the blockchain as a non-fungible token or smart contracts. A novel solution was proposed in an article published recently on ScienceDirect.com which suggests using token recipes to track the link between a product and the components used to manufacture it. Link to the full article below. Let's now take a look at a few supply chain solutions that are already operational. VeChain is one of the most well-known blockchain-based companies that aims to revolutionize the supply chain process. They're focused on assigning digital identities to the products and then linking them to the physical tag. The products can be tagged via NFC, RFID, or QR code, and their tag corresponds to an SHA-256 hash function. The technology is called VeChain Identity and allows for the tag product and all corresponding information, including supply chain activities, to be translated from the real world into the ledger. VeChain already works with Walmart China and PwC on a project designed to track food products. According to a statement made by VeChain, 23 products are already listed and tracked on the platform, with 100 products to be covered by the end of the year. VeChain also participates in the BMW startup Garage program, but it is not yet a strategic technological partner of the car manufacturer. Walmart is generally a company that invests heavily into blockchain solutions for supply chain. Their partnership with IBM has an ambitious goal of bringing a fully transparent food system. The goal is to precisely track the origin of any grocery product with a special emphasis on fruit and vegetables. The technology is said to reduce the time it takes to identify the origin of the product from approximately seven days to 2.2 seconds on average. Another recently announced partnership between Walmart and IBM is a pilot program aiming to precisely track the origin of pharmaceutical products. The initiative is partially mandated by the FDA, which requires companies to identify, track, and trace prescription medicines and vaccines distributed within the US. In addition to IBM, KPMG and Merck are also participating in the trial. What's interesting, Walmart is simultaneously exploring an alternative solution with the use of MetaLedger's Ethereum-based blockchain to see how it compares to Hyperledger technology used by IBM. While Walmart is mostly focused on security and compliance and tracking goods from an enterprise point of view, many companies are looking to facilitate blockchain to develop a more customer-facing solution. The goal here is to give consumers the ability to use mobile apps to track the origins of the product. The focus on tracking solution can be on promoting sustainable development, low carbon footprints, or organic and fair trade products. The two companies that we can mention here are Nestle and Carefor. Nestle recently began testing a solution developed in partnership with OpenSC that aims to track milk from farms in New Zealand to Nestle's facilities in the Middle East. The trial will later expand to include palm oil production in the Americas. If the test run proves scalable, Nestle will deploy more similar solutions. This project is done separately from the IBM Food Trust Initiative, spearheaded by Nestle in 2017. In more recent news, Carefor observed an increase in sales after a small-scale deployment of a food tracking service to customers. Buyers could scan the QR code with their smartphones to obtain useful information about the products. The solution was mostly successful in China, Italy, and France 
where buyers reportedly spend as long as 90 seconds reading merchandise information. The details provided by the app include the date of harvest, farm location, packaging date, and how long it took to ship. This project was also developed in partnership with IBM. Other companies that are set to explore blockchain supply chain solutions are Deloitte, AT&T, and PwC. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Digital Identity and Supply Chain. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to cover any of the topics mentioned in this video in more detail. Our next episode on this subject will cover autonomous vehicles and personal identities. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, the link in the description below. See you in the next one.